Hi everybody, my name is Jan Töne, I'm the co-founder of VoiceSphere and here next to me is our co-founder David Cockerley. From time to time we see a promising technology that is actually useless in everyday life. There has to come a product that makes it actually useful. Today we are talking about voice control technology. Apps like Siri are not working the way they should. All of them have two big problems. And the first one is they don't work with the most popular apps out there. And the second is they limit their technology to only a few apps. Today we're presenting you a product that solves both problems. Voice Sphere, the app that lets you talk to everything on your phone. So let's take on the first issue with them. All of them were great with things like the local calendar, the weather app, or maybe the contact list on our phones. But these things are not what we spend our time most with. We spend our time on Twitter, sharing photos on Instagram, or listening to songs on Spotify, YouTube, and much more. VoiceSphere works with 20 of the most popular apps right from the start. And David will show you how great this works right now. So uh, I was planning to give you a little demo right now, although I don't have the device here. Uh, can maybe someone from the technical crew? I can't. I can't hear you. Come up. I, I can't. I, I don't think your mic louder. is on or something. Sorry. Your micro. Uh, can I get someone from the technical crew? I uh, I actually was. Uh, there, there's a device. Get you my device. I need it here. I gave it to you, and uh, you were supposed to. Just Mike, just hand him your microphone and let's move on. Um, do you want to use this microphone? Okay. We'll Definitely. What, what okay. Missing? Uh, I'm missing uh, my mobile device for the demo. I just gave it to the technical crew. Well, okay. I can I can use my own one. Okay. Okay. So as I start up the app, you see uh, that my apps get placed inside my personal app feed. Here you see, for example, Instagram showing me some new photos by my friends. And if I want to talk to one of these apps, I can just tap on them and say, show me photos about Starbucks. We need to get a light on the phone to see it properly. We're not doing it justice, so we, we need to just shine a light on the phone. There must be one. I think it's right in front of you, right? That, is that little bendy thing? Is that a light? Yeah, that's better. Better like, like that? Yeah. Okay, so uh, what you see here are the photos right from Instagram inside VoiceSphere, and I don't even have to, to leave the app. So let's try another one. Play Get Lucky on SoundCloud. So what you see here are the results right from SoundCloud, and, and I can listen to the song without even leaving VoiceSphere. And even if you don't find the song you want on SoundCloud, VoiceSphere can give it to you using Spotify or YouTube. And what makes VoiceSphere really stand apart is how easy it is to integrate new products in VoiceSphere. And we're a TechCrunch Disrupt, so let me, let me show you how easy it is to integrate TechCrunch in VoiceSphere. Can we switch to the web demo, please? <coughs> so there we are inside VoiceSphere's API hub. Think of it as an IDE for API integrations in VoiceSphere. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new API called TechCrunch. We want to use it to ask VoiceSphere about the latest stories on TechCrunch. So I create a new function called latest stories. Here I give our algorithms a starting point by providing a possible user request. And now, just with a few lines of code, I'm going to can uh, get the latest stories from TechCrunch's RSS feed and display them right to the user. And as you see here, it already works with a few lines of code we just wrote. So let's take a look at this on my mobile device again. latest stories on TechCrunch. <clears throat> Here you see the latest stories from TechCrunch right inside VoiceSphere using the few lines of code we just created.
from now on, everybody can access TechCrunch just with their voice. Can we go back to the slides, please? So, see, we're already there. You see, the API Hub is really advanced technology that allows us to integrate more and more apps really fast. So let's talk about the second problem with voice control apps. All of them really limit their technology to only a few apps. But think of all the sophisticated software out there like Google Analytics or Salesforce. It would be such a tremendous improvement if professionals could reach all the data and functionality of these products just with their voice. And David will show you this improvement with a little demo right now. So can we go back to the mobile device? Show all my leads on Salesforce. Oh, it didn't get me right. Show all my leads on Salesforce. So what you see there is my business contacts, business contacts from salesforce.com with all the data connected to them. So I can, for example, give them a call. Call John Smith. And what this does is it gets the, it gets the phone number right from salesforce.com and uses voice sphere to call him. So a really efficient way to connect to your business data. We make our API hub open to every business product with an API. They can integrate their application and sell the voice sphere access to their customers inside our enterprise store. And here you see how the enterprise store will look like. Professionals can buy the integrations to make their work more easy and efficient. And voice sphere gets a share of every sale. We will receive 20% of the price and will open the enterprise store in the okay. following months. With voice, you're representing Guys. a voice control app that lets you talk to all your favorite apps and that lets complex software benefit from our technology. Okay. Have you done? Yeah. Right. You're done. Thank you very much, Voice Fear. Okay. Can I, can I start or do you guys want to? Okay, Go so for it. It's, it's a, Get it on Google Play. I'm a little confused. Is this, a, is this for developers to build into their apps full stop? Or is this an app that you then use as a user to integrate with the apps that you've already installed? No, it's like a voice IDE for developers. And uh, we don't want to open it right from the start. And we will open it first for enterprise software developers and providers. Okay. So they can, they can uh, provide their sophisticated uh, products. And uh, yeah, okay, so it's for developers. No, no, um, let no. me get that straight. Right now, it's an, it's an app, it's available in the Google Play Store, and you can use it just the way I tried to demo it um, with your favorite apps like Instagram or Facebook. So it's a Siri competitor basically in the Play Store. <coughs> and we are planning to open up the API later on this year to business products, so more complex software can also be integrated in VoiceFeed. So I download the app, and then I, I use it like you did to, to, for the current TechCrunch stories. I use it t to create a voice layer on top of apps that I've already installed? Well, you can use it even with apps so like you, you just have a, an example app that you have in the Google Play Store. Your audience is developers. You're trying to provide a Twilio for voice apps for developers, right? That is what we're, what we're definitely planning to do, but we don't have the, the uh, API hub, which is the technology I demoed you in the web browser. Uh, open yet? We're going to open that later this year. That's right cool. now, we are a consumer. Yeah, but what app. he's saying is, is the app that you currently have for download just an example app? It's no, not. That, that's a full. Uh, that's a full feature of voice control app, which works with uh, many different apps. So it works with Facebook, with Instagram, with Dropbox, with a variety of apps. That, and that's, that's cool. But I'm assuming that your long-term business is to yeah, get definitely, definitely. thousands In long of developers term, to use your product to voice enable their apps because your product is awesome and easy for developers to use, right? Exactly, that's uh, the long-term plan so of Twilio our... for voice apps. Neil, do you wanna? Because yeah. you're selling the kitchen sink. Just be more focused on what you guys eventually want to do. This is a great demonstration app, but we're getting a little confused sometimes. <laughs> um, so I wanna go back to your original premise, which was Siri is no good because it doesn't connect to enough applications. I actually think no, Siri is no good because I, yeah. as a developer, can't use Siri to build my app. No, Siri is no, not even that. Siri is no good because it doesn't get the basics of voice recognition and natural language processing right often enough to be useful, I would argue. And so you use it, and if it's good six times out of ten, you're not, it's not good enough. And if it gets something right 
one time and then you try to make a call and it doesn't get it right. It's just, it's just not reliable enough. The problem is not connecting it to applications. The problem is getting the, the upfront processing right, which you guys are not developing yourselves, right? You're using, I think you said yesterday, you're using the Google voice rec, but then you're using your own NLP. Exactly. Um, but your NLP seems to be very, very loose because in the demo, Yesterday it said Saints Force, and today it said Lease yeah, was it instead of Leads. It looked and it still was. thought it was a correct query. Yeah, definitely. So I think um, with, every, with every successful product, you have to make some key bets on technology that still needs to grow. And that's definitely something we're doing. So we are betting on speech recognition, definitely. It has to get better. But it's, it's pretty good already, but it still needs some improvement. And we're also betting on the API trend. It's another, it's another uh, other big trend that we're betting on. But you guys aren't developing your own NLP. You're using whatever's available, best technology. Your, your goal is to help provide an easy interface for developers to build mobile apps with voice, yes? Exactly. But, but it didn't look like Wait, I thought you said working. yesterday you were developing your own NLP. I'm sorry? I thought you were doing your own L natural language processing. Yeah, we're doing the yeah. natural language processing. That's, That's the part uh, with the API infrastructure and the natural language processing is the part that we do. We outsource the voice recognition to Google because they're the best in the market. They have a lot of voice samples to compare against. And uh, we're going to open the platform for the app developers. Well, but it also means that you're then dependent on your own financing plan until Google gets it right for the majority of the bell curve, which obviously nobody does yet. I mean, that's a risk that anybody financing you doesn't know how, how long it has to be financed until third-party providers get it right. So out of a necessity to finance, there's no hurry because the prerequisite for making it work as a mass market instrument is not there yet. Well, that's, um, I wouldn't call it dependence. So right now, we, just, we selected the best voice recognition on the market, and it needs to improve. Uh, that's true. It, it is pretty good, but it still needs to improve. But we are seeing the progress. It, it is better, it's better now than it was six months ago, and it's definitely got to be a better six months from now. And I think this is really, this is a bet, but it's a, it's a, it's a good one, I think. Uh, Bindi. Um, I'm going to come at this from the point of view as just your bog standard user. So um, I download an app that the app developers built this voice recognition into. How, how do you teach me about it? How do you convince me about it? I, I just don't see, I don't get it. Well, what, uh, the great benefit of voice, rec of voice control technology is really that it's more intuitive and it's faster. Uh, if if you, we got an app completely integrated, deep integration, then it's really fast to use it and it's really intuitive to use it. So, How are you going to educate the millions of users that are downloading the apps, though? I, that, that's the part I don't get. I'm sorry? I, that's the part I don't understand, is how are you going to educate people to use that? I, I don't get... I don't get uh, how, how are you going to... Um, how are you going to get people to use VoiceSphere? Is the idea that the app... Uh, engineers themselves promote the, the capability of voice fear yeah. through via their I, own apps or are you going and go out individually to market and promote it amongst users? Yeah, we're, we're going to market our, um, our own app individually and uh, so we are really a hub for all the apps that people actually use and this is the, the idea for consumers to use voice fear to just have all apps on one place and interact with them in the most intuitive way possible. Isn't that slightly, sorry, do you mind if I jump and yeah. ask a question? I mean, aren't, isn't that slightly confused, confused you know, go-to-market strategy? You're trying to be, both promote your own app, but also go via other apps as well? Or are you going to concentrate on one or the other? Right now, we're focusing on the consumer app. The API app for developers is not uh, publicly available yet. And if we see the, uh, the traction and the, uh, the user interaction that people actually like interacting with their uh, voice uh, with voice fee and we begin to see that uh, then we're going to open up it to uh, every app developers um, all across the world and then I think we're going to have a pretty strong product that combines both great natural language processing a great platform and the functionality of apps of uh, all different kinds. So we have, you have a, a former investor in Skype on the stage here. What do you think um, Klaus in terms of, or oh, two in fact, <laughs> that's a good point. What do you think about the, maybe integrating with Skype? Sorry, again, what do you think about the p potential integration with Skype that this might happen? Well, I think Microsoft has to answer that one. Um, so they, they are not that fast as they used to be in decision making. Um, <clears throat> but, well, I'm still, I'd be scared to see a, a point from when on 
it is good enough to, to be mainstream, right? Because this theory thing is nice, everybody at the beginning tried it out, but then in lack of functionality, and even if it doesn't work twice out of 10, it's dead. So uh, then, and because what at the end, what you do or try to do is change the consumer's behavior, which is always the hardest thing to do. And if it fails the, too often in the phase where you, the consumer gives you credit for the innovation, yeah, then it is so expensive to win them back that basically the window is closed. And I don't see that happening yet yeah, with even um, the, 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 the example that you gave where out of language where, where the <coughs> recognition wasn't exact enough. So I think that is still too, too difficult. Well, how, well, how do you see the time frame until it has reached a reliable level uh, where everybody is fine with it? Well, um, what we, uh, there, there are two parts in, in voice control, in voice control accuracy, that's speech recognition and natural language processing. We take care of the natural language processing and we've got a great fault-tolerant algorithm. You see, yesterday it, it didn't got me right when I, when I was demoing Salesforce, it got me Salesforce, but it did give me the right result. That was due to our fault-tolerant natural language processing algorithm because it, uh, it does not need to have 100% perfect speech recognition. It can, it can uh, maybe there's some mistake, there are one or two words different, it will still give you the right result. And uh, from a speech recognition point of view, I think the, the iteration is really, really fast and uh, I think from really from mainstream uh, from mainstream breakthrough it's it's less than less than 24 months away from the speech recognition point of view so a great a great a great analogy is the touch screen before the iPhone we knew it from ATMs we, we hated it it, it, it was ter terrible user experience it was imprecise it didn't really work and I think uh, that speech recognition is really a promising technology that needs to be leveraged more effectively than it is today Right, and you mentioned that uh, changing consumer behavior is, almost, is always the hardest way. And this is really why we are focusing also on the enterprise store. Because with the, tech, with the voice recognition we have right now, um, voice control also um, have, has the most benefit uh, in, in the areas of complex software. Like Salesforce was our example because it, it still ha has a lot of functionality and it is really the most uh, So Dave has way. a question. So uh, actually another question, more of a comment. So I think you guys are being a little too honest about where you're at with your technology. <laughs> like you keep saying, we're going to have us develop this API for developers in the future. It's like, fuck that. Just pitch the future tense, be a little Steve Jobs, and like, we have an API for developers, and you know, you'll get there. But I think you need to be impressing us with like, here's the growth of the voice market in the future. Like, tell me in the next five years of the growth of voice-enabled apps, which should be everything, right? You should be telling us, like, you're living in the dark ages right now, typing into your fucking stupid little, like, iPads. Everything is going to be controlled by voice. That's a huge market. Developers are going to have to be developing millions of apps, and we're going to be the company that helps developers build great mobile apps. And that should be, like, you're painting the picture. Now, now that may... That may be bullshit, but you got to convince me that that's what you're going to be able to do. I mean, so speaking to that wearable technology, I mean, what, what all this OK glass? What do you think? <laughs> Using voice? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. I would like to backstage afterwards talk to you because I, there's still core features of this that I don't understand at all. So it's going to be really hard to judge you, at least for me. And I think Dave, I haven't gone further down because we're not talking, but we're actually still a little confused on some things. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. I definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, we're out of time on the questions, so thank you very much.